untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're taking a look at a mono green elf deck trying to ramp into the Tarask, the 9 mana 10 10 legendary dinosaur from Forgotten Realms and the Tarask has haste and ward 10 as long as it was cast and whenever it attacks it fights target creature defending player controls. So an incredibly powerful creature if we can cast it, but of course at 9 mana that's not going to be straightforward, so to help us ramp into it we can count on a Circle of Dreams Druid, another new addition, a 3 mana 2-1 elf that can tap to add green mana to our mana pool for each creature we control. So this rewards us for playing lots of creatures, and being this elf tribal deck we can easily accomplish that. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck here, starting out at 1 mana, where we have our Sentinel, which can also add additional mana by tapping another untapped creature we control. At 2 mana we've got more mana elves, with the full playset of Woodland Mystic. Now this is one of these arena exclusive cards, so it won't necessarily be legal in best of 3 standard going forward, but it is still legal in best of 1, and can easily be replaced with any other 2 mana mana elf that generates any additional mana or untaps or lands, like our Sculptor of Winter, which is a 2-2 that can tap to untap target snow land, so essentially adds 1 mana since all our lands are pretty much snow lands. And then we've got a full playset of Elfish Warmaster, 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. says whenever one or more elves enter the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. And this only triggers once each turn. And for 7 mana, elves we control get plus 2 plus 2 and death touch until end of turn. So the Warmaster is an excellent mana sink once we start generating a bit of a board presence. So also very powerful in combination with the Circle of Dreams Druid, as it will generate plenty of creatures to make more mana, and then gives us a way to spend all that mana. And then we also have the full playset of a Realm Walker as one of our card advantage engines, a 3 mana 2 3 changeling, so it has all creature types, including elf. And as it enters the battlefield, we choose the elf creature type, and then we can look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of our library. So that can easily help us go off and cast a ton of elves off the top. If we ever find a second Realm Walker, feel free to name a dinosaur instead, so we can potentially cast the Tarask off the top of our deck as well. Then at 4 mana we've got Canopy Tactician, this is our lord giving other elves plus 1 plus 1, and also taps to add triple green, so another excellent way to ramp into our dinosaur. Then we've got two copies of Elven Ambush, a 4 mana instant, creating a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token for each elf we control. So this is a very powerful way to completely go off with our Circle of Dreams Druid. In a lot of instances it is going to be a win more card, so it's not necessarily the best magic card out there, but if you're kind of in a board state where there's a bit of a board stall happening, Elven Ambush can definitely help us take over. Then we've got two copies of Tyvar Kel, the 4 mana planeswalker, and since elves we control can tap for black mana, so turns all our elves into mana creatures, we can use the plus one to put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target elf, untap it, and it also gains death touch until end turn, so we can potentially use it to untap our Circle of Dreams Druid or the Canopy Tactician to add additional mana. Then the user ability generates a 1-1 elf warrior creature token, and the minus 6 emblem also gives us a ton of extra card advantage. And then topping off our curve, we've got one deck of many things to potentially provide card advantage or get cards back from our graveyard. If we're lucky enough to roll a 20 while we're empty-handed, we can potentially reanimate an opposing creature, and if that dies, we win the game. And then three copies of the Tarask. And then the mana base includes 4 copies of a Lair of the Hydra as another great creature land, and mana sink for all the mana we can generate with our Circle of Dreams Druid and Tactician. And then we've got 18 Snow-Covered Forests and 2 copies of Faceless Haven as an extra creature land that works with our Snow-Covered Forests. Now we can't play too many copies of Haven, otherwise it's going to be tricky to cast our Circle of Dreams Druid on curve, but of course we've got still 22 green sources plus all the mana elves that can help us cast it as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with the fine hand. Turn to Warmaster. Frostbite deals with the Sentinel, that's fine. 
Put in blue reds, maybe a dragon stack. Never mind, mill deck. Still gonna start with a Warmaster here. Wouldn't be able to play a deck of many things next turn, even with turn two sculpture. Alright, another frostbite, it's painful. Alright, we've got the Tarask to ramp into now. Not the best combo with the deck of many things. If we don't have a lot of mana to work with. If they're playing Tasha's Hideous Laughter, at least we have a few 9 mana creatures in the deck. So now we've got our card draw engine. Can help us get back some of our elves out of our graveyard potentially. And there's a rune crab. No land. Alright, so how about play sculptor and then activate the deck? And return tactician, which we sadly cannot play now. In two turns, we can probably cast our Tarask. Tactician pumping our sculptures also enables us to attack past the rune crab. It's going to be an expressive iteration to help them find a land. So they might have a hideous laughter in hand that they want to copy with teachings or dual strike, but they just didn't have the mana to so far. Finds a Frostbite, which they cannot cast at the moment. Okay, so... Tactician. And then... I guess we just attack and activate deck. And I can do this end of turn as well. One Tarasca gone. Still 36 cards remain. And yeah, next turn, if Tactician survives, we can Tarask it up. Crush the weak. Okay, do they also have a Frostbite then? They do. Alright, that's unfortunate. So there goes our board presence. Get back a sculpture. And we won't be activating the deck this turn. But next turn we can still cast Tarask. Opponent's gone through three copies of Frostbite total, but they have another Crush the Weak. Okay. They're not making it easy. Tactician. We will play. And then I think I activate the deck now in case we get back a land so I can still play a land for the turn. Or if we draw one. Alright, so... Hopefully now we get to play our dinosaur. 29 cards left. And next turn we're probably going to see double hideous laughter. Stormcaller plus Cacophony is going to mill for 16. Yeah, that's not a lot of cards left. Although they are down to one card in hand at least. All the Tarasks are gone, so Hideous Laughter is probably going to be game over if they have it. So, cast our Dinosaur. And take out Ruin Crab. Yes, yeah, sweepers are effective against elf deck, and we face two of them this game. Bone falls to four. 
Still have DAC available, but don't think it's gonna come up. All right, and our opponent packs it in, so they didn't have any mill cards left, and the Tarask was gonna take him out. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one Sentinel, turn two Sculpture, turn three Tyvar, hopefully. Opponents on the Cleric class, so life gain deck. Our deck doesn't have any other one drops besides Sentinels, so we rarely get to use its ability on turn two, but still gives us more board presence. And we do have a few elves that don't tap for mana. Ooh, Circle of Dreams Druid might be worth playing here. It's better than Tyvar. Hmm, maybe not. Don't really have anywhere to spend my mana other than Lair of the Hydra. And then... Don't hate working up towards the ultimates. So let's just chill. The Valkyries can be able to pressure our Planeswalker. Although Sentinel does have reach. Realmwalker an excellent pickup as well. So then I want to play Circle of Dreams first. So I will have the Realmwalker on defense. Which can block the Professor Symbology. I guess I can also just tap for black mana. That's probably even better. Play Realmwalker. And a Canopy Tactician waiting on top. Alright. And then next turn we get to... Make a ton of mana with Circle of Dreams Druid. Have a 2-3 reach to block Valkyrie. Skyclave Hierophant joins the fun. Warmaster on top. So let's cast that first. Ooh, with a Tarask. So that's coming next turn. And then for now... Play Sculptor. Play Canopy Tactician. And uh, we'll have some spare mana too. Can untap my Circle of Dreams Druids with Tyvar to make even more mana. And then activate a War Master to potentially attack for a bunch. So we were in good shape, especially with the Tarrasque coming up. Sadly, didn't get to cast it here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Just missing something to ramp into. Ooh, Warmaster's a good pickup. I'll play that now. Onto red whites. So now we've got a mana sink for Circle of Dreams. So if they don't have any removal, they're gonna be in trouble. Luminar Casperance, we can probably overpower here. Could also play Tactician, which adds a similar amount of mana to the Circle of Dreams. Yeah, I guess that's. Also fine here. And then next turn we can still double spell potentially. Put on tomorrow do colors. Could be a party deck maybe. Aspirants a cleric and a spare dagger. Potentially pointing towards some death touch synergies. Ooh, Elven Ambush. Yes, please. 
So if I cast this in my opponent's turn, I can trigger the Warmaster a second time. So I think we start by attacking, because it allows me to activate the Warmaster if I keep Tactician untapped. And this allows me to sneak in some damage. I could technically double block Warmaster, that's a fine trade. Alright, now I'll just activate Warmaster instead. Opponent falls to 11. Would have been nice to go a Circle of Dreams and then in the opponent's turn ambush. And then we probably would have had lethal for next turn. But this is also a fine exchange as our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. I'll lead with Forests over Haven, in case we pick up Circle of Dreams Druid, so we can cast it more easily. And then, might go for Wellwalker next turn. Well, hopefully it's not a Doomscar, which is a reason to not play my Realmwalker yet. Yeah, I could see that. Because Realmwalker is a way for us to potentially recover from a Sweeper. Uh, just a Bounding Gold on Faceless Haven. Doesn't mean that this still couldn't be a Doomscar and our opponent's just willing to take a bit of damage early. So, I think we just uh, attack. Them answering the Haven also points towards them potentially having a Sweeper since they're worried about our creature land. Uh, never mind, it's gonna be Protector Shield. I mean, they could still have a Sweeper for all we know. Four, five, six, seven. I mean, I can activate Warmaster, but only hit for three. So that's not going to be enough. Probably commit our Circle of Dreams Druid, and then... Next turn I can easily activate Warmaster. Opponent foretells another card. Alright, I guess it's not a Doomscar then. And uh, yeah, our opponent looks pretty dead. So, can activate this, activate this. And our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Probably gonna go turn two Sculpture of Winter and then turn three Warmaster into another Sculpture, if all goes according to plan. Opponent Red Green. With a Magda. Circle of Dreams Druid is also tempting. Although I kind of like the mana efficiency of Warmaster into Sculpture. Trigger Warmaster, I've got a 1-1 one, one to block Magda. And if we draw a cheap Elf, we can maybe trigger Warmaster in our turn and the opponent's turn with the Elven Ambush. Canopy Tactician, good draw as well. Yeah, probably just cast Tactician and Smash. Maybe not with the Warmaster. Although the double block Warmaster were also pretty happy. And our opponent's just gonna pack it in too far behind. They might not have any removal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an exciting hand. Sentinel into Warmaster, into Circle of Dreams Druid. Gonna provide a lot of mana to then sink into Realmwalker and the Warmaster's ability. I might as well hit for one. 
opponent a life gain deck with Solmander, Black White. So they could have some removal here. It's going to be a Pyre of Heroes as a sac engine. So if we get to untap, we can potentially start going off with our Realmwalker. Alright. So step one. Probably play Realmwalker, see what's on top. Just a land. In that case, can we potentially activate Warmaster here? We probably can, so right now this makes 6 mana, so we have 7 total. Could play an extra Sculptor of Winter. Yeah, I guess we might as well. Tap or Summoning Sick Elf. And this now makes 7 mana, so that's enough to activate Warmaster. So these two can attack. And we can activate. Opponents at 15, and if they don't have a sweeper, they're probably dead. Although Crippling Fear would be incredibly effective, and nope. No removal for the Circle of Dreams Druid or Warmaster, and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand has a ton of potential. If our creatures go unanswered, we could ramp into... Maybe a turn 5 to Rask. Mystic still makes the third green necessary for Circle of Dreams. Although two red sources early is probably not a good sign for our little elves. Blue reds. Alright, could cast Tactician, which is the most mana efficient play. And then, if we get to untap, we would have 8 mana, so not quite enough. Dragon's Fire takes out Tactician. Next turn we can Circle of Dreams plus Mystic, potentially. As our opponent foretells another card. Backup Tactician. I think I still prefer double spelling here. Alright, if we get to untap, we have enough mana for Tarask. Crash the Weak has a few things to say about that. Well, we do have a few creature lands to leverage at least. And if Tactician survives, just one land away from Tarask still. Epiphany for an extra turn. Alright, it's Tarask time. It's gonna get countered. That works. Pretty painful to have our 9 mana card divided by 0. But we'll try again next turn. As your opponent gets a mascot exhibition. Another Epiphany. Alright, that's a lot of damage. And a lot of birds for the Tarask to get past as well. Alright, we get to take out the 4-4. Four four. Let's 
opponent can't quite trade here. Maybe they should have left back an additional bird. Or that to another epiphany. A lore hold command will do it too. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty nice hand. Sentinel into Warmaster into Circle of Dreams. Plenty of mana to activate Warmaster. Opponent Red Whites. Turn to Morningstar, so maybe an equipment deck. Those typically don't have a lot of removal, which is promising. Even get to cast Sentinel after playing Warmaster to make an elf token. So we're off to a blazing start. Rip apart on the Warmaster, unfortunately. And a Charger. So we can still cast our Tactician. And attack for a bunch. This looks fine. And then Lair of the Hydra, potential mana sink for Circle of Dreams and Tactician. Mold the Skyclaves. It's gonna be difficult to block, or attack past for that matter. But uh, Realmwalker can provide quite a bit of card advantage, maybe. Go with Elf. Land on top. So it's just gonna be Circle of Dreams, play tap Lair. And then next turn we get to make a very large Hydra. Unless we have more Elves on top. The Forge Master. So this makes tokens bigger and non-tokens can return to their hands if they're equipped. Elven Ambush is going to be incredibly powerful. So is there any point in attacking with Hydra as long as Call's in play? Yeah, probably not since they can just jump block and then take out one of my creatures. So I think we're just going to chill. And then next turn we would have been able to Elven Ambush, make six Elf Tokens, and then the Circle of Dreams would make around 12 mana, so we'd have a very large lair as well as just being able to go wide and swarm the opponent onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand. Sentinel into Mystic into potentially Tactician before Circle of Dreams. Either way, we'll have a lot of mana if our creatures go unanswered, so we can ramp into all sorts of goodies or make a large lair of the Hydra. Turn one Rune Crab. Well, this is a good hand against a mill deck, I think. Especially if we draw any curve toppers. Alright, and blue red, so they might have some removal in there. Cacophony Mills for eight. Alright, so can double spell and then maybe next turn play Tactician, bait out some removal. Don't hate that. This is more vulnerable to a Crush the Weak than playing Tactician, but managed to bait out the Frostbite, that's good. Another Cacophony, Mills for 8. And uh, 
probably play the untapped land here so we can attack for four damage. And hope Tactician survives. So three Snowlands means Frostbites can take out our Tactician, sadly. Alright, time to fire up Lair of the Hydra. And then... Do I want to play a tapped land? Yeah, sure. So we can activate for four. And next one we can activate for six potentially. Opponents down to one card in hand, so if they don't have any card draw effects, they're just top decking, they're faceless haven too small to block Hydra. Yeah, I guess we'll play a Sculptor. Can still tap it with Sentinels, so only cost me one mana. So X equals five. If we can top deck our Tarask, we can cast it and just win the game on the spot. I guess they could chum block with Faceless Haven. Alright, it's gonna be Will Scholar Frosts. It draws two cards. I just need to be patient. So we can send two one powered creatures at will to finish him off and then a big Hydra at the opponents. Unless we're guaranteed to have lethal otherwise. Tactician might be game here, let's see. Put on block sculptor, take six. So not quite lethal, but they're forced to lose the crab, which is probably worth it. Points at one. We've got Lair of the Hydra in case of a sweeper. Tactician a zero two. Dual strike. Okay, dual strike. Hideous laughter. Nope. Just a uh, dual strike. Teach by example, and that's game. Yeah, those are a reason to sometimes hang on to your cacophony or hideous laughter, so you have something to copy later in the game, but it looks like they drew both after playing their Planeswalker. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a potentially powerful hand. If our druid survives, we could ramp into an early Tarask. Double Mountain might make that a little tricky, as our opponent foretells a card. Alright, they are stuck on two lanes at least. Yeah, let's go with the Druid still. Next turn we can play our Planeswalker. Opponent keeps on foretelling. So Tyvar, make an elf and play sculptor. Looks fine. <laughs> All right, another card foretold. Not sure what's going on anymore, but uh, we're gonna get to combo off pretty much. So this adds four. And it's five, so I can still Tarask after playing Realmwalker. 
could play Tactician. But uh, I think we're just going to uh, untap. Play Tarask. And uh, maybe play Tactician first. Opponents at seven. And then our opponent explodes. Well, not sure what they were setting up here, but uh, well, we got to ramp into a Tarask, so I'm satisfied. So yeah, overall, this mono green elf deck is capable of some very explosive starts. If our elves go unanswered, especially with our Circle of Dreams and our Tactician, and then ramping into Tarask is one option, activating Warmaster also very effective. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.